Hi, welcome to this month's edition of the Hello Woodlands Nonprofit of the Month Highlight. Good morning. Uh, I'm your host, Randy Lovelace, uh, with Paragon Independent Insurance. And you are really, really, really going to want to pay attention and, and listen to this today. Uh, this subject matter, while it's it's important, but it's, it's unbelievable, but it's, it's real. And I'm here with uh, Becca Carey. Uh, with uh, Hands of Justice, and gosh, um, back out, uh, uh, tell me, what is, uh, well, first off, thank you for doing this, and uh, and for what you're going to tell us, and what is Hands of Justice, and uh, how, how did it, it get started? Well, um, Hands of Justice, we are at an anti-trafficking nonprofit organization here in Montgomery County. Um, we are survivor-led, and um, our organization is really based on economic empowerment for survivors of human trafficking. So we do a lot of different things. Um, first and foremost, education on, on two aspects. We, we love educating the community on what human trafficking is, like how it happens, who it happens to, the signs to look for, and, and what to do if you do suspect some, the money's being trafficked. But on the other side of the spectrum, we love um, helping survivors um, by giving them scholarships to go back to school, um, like through GED, or to uh, get a certification program, or to go to college. So we're doing education on two sides of the spectrum, one, one for the community and one for survivors. Um, we also uh, do outreach every month, so we hand out 85 freedom bags to survivors and um, victims that are still out there. We actually partner with about six other organizations so that these bags can get to the right individuals. Um, I mean, they anywhere from the strip clubs down in Houston to brothels to um, homeless individuals on the street. Um, we try to get those out every month. And then we also do freedom bag. Oh, freedom um, I'm sorry. Yeah, a freedom. Yeah, it's basically it's a bag full of like essential items that they need for months. Kind of makes their life a little bit um, less heavy. I'm helps them out. So it's gonna be the stuff like um, like deodorant and soap and things like that. And then we also put in encouraging cards, greeting cards for the for the women and the men. Um, and then we give them a couple of fun things just, just to make their life a little bit easier um, during that time. So um, that's what our freedom bags are. And we, we do them again once a month. We have a list on Amazon and people donate and, and we put them together and we get them out there. So that's what those are. Cool. <laughs> yeah. well, Many would probably say that there's not uh, a human trafficking problem in Montgomery County because it is a very nice area. Uh, mm. Your response to that? My response to that would be that human trafficking is everywhere, including the United States and including the, the, the nice suburbs of, of Houston. It is not just down in the inner city um, areas. It's not just in other countries. It is very much prevalent here in in your communities um, and it's all around you. It's normally considered um, a crime that is hidden in plain sight. Um, so we always say that you probably know of somebody who has been trafficked or ha is currently being trafficked. You just do not know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so. You mentioned survivor led uh, for the organization. Yeah. Could you touch on that? Yeah, so I am a survivor of domestic sex trafficking. I was trafficked um, when I was 21 years old for two and a half years. Um, and that actually, <laughs> after I was trafficked, it took me about 14 years to self-identify. And I think a lot of people don't understand that um, it normally takes years after the trauma and the abuse for those that are in it to really understand it, that that's what happened to them. And so it, for me, that's, it took a long time. Um, and, I, and I had a, a, a hard time dealing with it, obviously. I think most people do. Um, the trauma of human trafficking is, is a trauma that is very hard to explain to people and how long lasting it can be. It is probably going to be a lifelong journey for those that have gone through something like that to heal and to get back to a, a way of life that's considered normal to other people. So for me, um, it took me 14 years and then I went um, to Thailand. I was accepted to a school over in Thailand, um, specifically working in human trafficking. So I went there for five weeks and dealt with um, children as young as seven years old that were being trafficked, um, women in bars. Um, we did a lot of different things over there. And then I came back to Texas with the knowledge that I had learned over there and opened hands, hands of justice. Yeah, here. Looks like you've got quite a 
quite a bit of, uh, and not just the experience in Thailand and education, but a lot of other uh, uh, education um, designations or things that you, you've uh, accomplished uh, to, uh, to, to help out in all this. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I work, why don't, we kind of partner, so the governor's office has an initiative program right now, and right now I'm in charge of their economic empowerment group. And they touch on different areas that um, in trafficking that need to be filled or touched on. Or um, so there's there's different groups within the governor's office. So I am on their economic empowerment. Um, again, that's an area that is not really defined yet and not um, really being filled. Um, so we're trying to get a lot of a lot more resources in that area for survivors. Um, I am on uh, the board with the Montgomery County Coalition as well. I'm here in. Um, and again, we were just talking about how Montgomery County is so great at what they're doing and cracking down on the cases here. And, and the task force here is amazing. The people that work in human trafficking uh, or anti-trafficking here in Montgomery County are really, really great. Um, yeah. As you saw at the, at the event on Saturday, <laughs> last Saturday. Your recommendation uh, or your suggestion for uh, individuals that may may have an inkling or they're not quite sure uh, that maybe a family member or someone they know uh, may be um, groomed or being groomed uh, mm -hmm. do they do they wait till they they know for sure do they you know do they just say something anyway and then who do they say it to and who do they ask I would say if you even suspect that somebody is uh, is being trafficked, call the hotline number immediately. Uh, there is a nationwide hotline number. If you call that, they get the information and they tend to ding it back to the task force in the area that it, the calls being made, and then hopefully an investigation gets started. I always say it is better to call and be wrong than not to call and to find out later that you that you were right. So yeah, yeah definitely call. Okay, is, is there an age range of uh, um, individuals that tend to be trafficked or groomed or, you know, um, pulled into more that? More than others, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that the, um, the consensus is that it is more young uh, teenagers, like I think the average age for a male is 11 years old and the average age for a female is uh, anywhere between 14 and 15 years old, but it's actually rising a little bit, um, that, that average age. Um, I, again, I was trafficked at 21, and the majority of the girls that I work with have been um, trafficked later, um, but I do know quite a few people that were trafficked as children, and the majority of the children, I think they say like 70% of children that are being trafficked are af actually being trafficked by somebody they know or a family member. So it's not just um, the misconception of being abducted off the streets and locked in the basements and sold is really not what's happening here in trafficking in the United States. Yeah. And you yeah. mentioned males, so it's not just uh, females that are trafficked or, or uh, going after uh, males as well. Uh, yeah, the males, I think, is up to about 35% of trafficking cases involve males. Um, and people don't even think that. That's like mind blowing to them. But it is very prevalent for a male to be trafficked. I mean, you have to think about labor trafficking as well as sex trafficking as well. And a lot of those that have been labor trafficking tend to be um, trafficked in sex as well. So it, there's a lot of overlapping, but um, it is very prevalent with men. Um, and, and people need to know that it's not just women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. So you, uh, you obviously, you're speaking with us today. You will speak to organizations and groups um, uh, anywhere, and we're gonna we're gonna um, hopefully be seeing a lot of you uh, in in the coming um, days, months, weeks, uh, years of uh, getting that word out and uh, and and doing the work that you do. I mean, yeah, it's it's amazing. I know it uh, takes a special person to uh, be dealing with all of those things, those issues, and and to be able to work with the individuals because I'm. Uh, I've got to think that um, it's not like talking to your average person. No, no. I, I mean, in some aspects, we are we're normal people, but yeah, it's 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 a normal person that's dealing with a lot of 
trauma. And yeah, so they, they really yeah, they, they take a, a lot of um, extra time and care. And I think the misconception is that people can just go down in like the brothels in Houston and, and take a girl right out and rescue them. And it does not happen that way. You have to build a trust with these women and men. Um, and that takes a long time. So if you're wanting to get into anti-trafficking at all, you need to understand that it is a, it's a commitment of your time and um, consistency of showing up over and over again yeah. um, and building relationships. Yeah. yeah. Well, then uh, when did you start your, your organization? You're relatively new. Yeah, we're, we're three and a half years old. So we, okay. we opened in 2017. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we obviously can see what you're doing for the community. What, uh, other than word of mouth and, um, and, and exposure of, of your organization and what you're doing, is there something that the community can do for you? Um, we are always looking for volunteers and we're always looking for donations, especially for like our freedom bags. Again, our list is on our, um, it's on Amazon, Amazon, yeah. And there's a list there of our needs, but also um, our biggest need because we focus mostly on scholarships for men and women is we need sponsors, people to come on and say, hey, I want to sponsor one of these men and individuals to go back to college. And right now we have, I believe, nine scholarships waiting for the spring for us to fill. Um, COVID, I think, as we all know, uh, for any nonprofit is really just um, it's put a big hindrance on funding and, and finding those funds in any aspect. So, I mean, anytime that somebody wants to come on and help, um, a hundred percent of the proceeds that we receive go out to the community. I don't get paid. <laughs> My volunteers are a hundred percent volunteer based. So it's, um, uh, every, every dollar goes out to help somebody else. Does someone qualify for the scholarships? Um, well, they, they can go onto our website, um, handsofjustice.org. Um, and they can fill out our application. And then I contact them um, after they have applied. And then there's a couple of um, documents that they have to get to us. But then we sit down with our board and my board goes over it and, and decides who's gonna be. Okay. So far we have not been, able, we haven't turned anybody down, but we're, we're afraid and because of COVID we're getting to that point unless others right. can step up and help us. Right, well that's, that's amazing that I know that, uh, if someone's in that position, they probably are just feel like they're well. There's no place else to go, but obviously you're giving them places to go and, and resources, yeah, and so yeah. that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, for me, education was such a big deal when I got my degree because I got my degree in, in 2018, but it took me a really long time. And so looking back, I always was like, I really wish there had been a program that helped the transition between trauma <laughs> and um, going in and doing something better with my life. It would have been easier, but we also do support groups for individuals and, and having that support as well um, within the community is a good. Is yeah, good. yeah, that's yeah. amazing. So what you're doing is amazing. <laughs> Kudos to you for, for pulling yourself uh, out of it and, and getting your education and, and, and really bringing this organization to light and, and, and what you're doing for the people. Uh, that are still uh, in that situation. So that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So thanks yeah. so much. But, well, I think that wraps it up for this month. Uh, thank you so much for, for watching and stay tuned to uh, next month uh, for a, a, another highlight. Uh, thanks again. Have a wonderful day. I'm Randy Lovelace and um, everyone be good. Love y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs>